we're uh, in the Black Isle, which is a uh, peninsula just north of Inverness. And we're mostly arable, but we do have a, a, a mixture towards some livestock on, on the farm. Our crops are predominantly oilseed rape and wheat, but our main crop is spring barley in this area, probably 80% of our acreage. We've been increasing our cropping area, and that's why I came to the Monitor Farm. I'm probably one of the furthest travelled people to the Monitor Farm. The farm is uh, 100 miles north of here in Caithness and um, it's a mixed farm. We were sort of at a time in our lives as kids had grown up, they'd left school, they were uh, virtually through university and we just thought we'd have a, it was a chance to look again at the business and, and refresh what we were doing and instead of always just doing what we ever did. I decided to come along to the Monitor Farm meetings. I thought it would be of interest to see what other people did and look at other people's businesses, maybe get some ideas how we might improve our own business. We kind of concentrated in soil quite a lot over the over the period. As a package with the soil both up, look at canopy management, tyre pressures, compaction issues, had a huge impact on the area. The farmers took that home and had a real think about it. And as a result, you see Brian's bought two, a set of, of tyres for his tractor. When we looked at soil structure and health, it, certainly I learnt a lot from it. It was a kind of eureka moment where we thought, right, soil is probably the most important part of this whole uh, arable business um, venture that we've not focused on. There was good meetings around that about soil, just looking after soil really. For a while there we wondered whether livestock would be part of our future farming enterprise and we've made the decision it most definitely will because we need that organic um, the manure to put back into the soil. We've been uh, uh, cutting our beef numbers up north whereas when I came here all the talk is about getting cattle back on arable farms because they're they're uh, losing their organic matter. Especially on an arable rotation, we're, we've got no any grass, so trying to get either livestock or somebody else's livestock or grass or take in organic matter in either the form of dung or uh, compost. We've sort of dipped into looking at the succession thing, we've changed the business structure. Yeah, there's lots of things we've learnt in this whole project. I suppose the biggest shake-up call was was when one of the management group told us that we were a bit sloppy and not paying attention to detail and that, and, and we've really made an effort now to, to up our game. And the whole thing has helped not just his personal development, but the whole family. I think the Monitor Farm, the fact that we've been networking and getting ideas from other people it's opened our eyes. There's a huge amount of experience in farmers in the area within the group, the community group itself. I'd say that's been the biggest thing is the meeting our people and networking different ideas. And actually when we go to monitor farm meetings about the country, it's, the network has become almost country wide. You know? Before I came down here, the HDB was, was just a deduction of my grain check. I didn't really understand what they were about. I think they've, they've been a, had a very prominent role in this and uh, through Gavin Dick and the benchmarking, uh, I think that's the lasting uh, legacy of, of the Monitor Farm, if that keeps going, because we've got a lot out of that. It's a long-term impact, but we're also looking at the much bigger picture. It comes down to the Monitor Farmers, Brian and Caroline here, who have been open to new ideas. <laughs>